my name is Kevin Clay and I am going to, in this instructional video for the one-way grinding hone, show you how to set up the jig so that you can hone your planes and chisels. The jig is very easy to set up. The first thing you have to do is get the roller parallel with the blade holder. The best way to do this is to open the blade holder up as wide as it'll go, set it on a flat surface, Loosen off the swivel holders, then apply pressure to the head of the jig, and then tighten down the two holding screws. Once you do this, this wheel should be parallel with the blade holders, and when you hone, you should get a nice square edge on your blade. The one-way grind and hone jig can be used to restore a blade that has been badly damaged, for example if you were to drop it on the floor and chip the edge, or it can also be used to just restore an edge that's only gotten a little bit dull. In order to use the jig easily, you're going to need a, a mounting board. The board should have an area for the roller to roll on, and it should have a pocket to hold the honing stone. The jig rolls behind the honing stone, it doesn't roll on the stone, and this helps protect the stone from damage from the wheel, and it helps protect the wheel from damage from the stone. To use the jig, you should stick your tools out about the same amount every time. It should be around 5 eighths to 3 quarters of an inch. You want it as close as you can in but you don't want the brass corners to be rolling or sliding on the stone. To set the angle, you can set a protractor on the top of the grind and hone while it's sitting on the stone. And then you can read directly the angle that you're going to put on. Right now I've got about 24 and a half degrees, which should be just fine. You want to lubricate the stone. Put two hands on the jig, light pressure, one hand here, one hand here, and that should be all it takes if you had the angle set close to sharpen your Plane. When you want to go to the next grid up, it's a simple matter of taking this stone out, putting the next one in, and you can use the same setup board for all your honing stones. When you're grinding a tool, what you're trying to achieve is to remove the bulk of the material on the heel with your grinder or a very coarse stone and then to have a very small cutting edge, a micro bevel that takes a very little amount of honing to establish and that's what's going to do the bulk of your cutting. By having a small micro bevel you'll find that your stones last longer and it's a lot less time spent honing. When you set the tool on the wheel, if your stone is half an inch thick and you're sticking the blade out approximately 5 eighths to half an inch and you line up on the side of the grinding hone line number three on the outer part and number three on the inner part you should have very close to a 25 degree micro bevel. If you need to make a small adjustment from that there is a vernier scale on the side of the jig. If you take a look you'll see that there is a series of lines on the outer part of the jig any series of lines on the inner part of the jig. These lines are offset from each other by about one degree increments. So if you look, when you're lined up three on, with the three on the outside with the three on the inside and you're not exactly where you need to be, you can then take a look at the scale and move so that the next line that's closest lines up and that will give you about a one degree movement. 
and then the next one lining up will give you another degree and after that another degree until you get all the way over and the fours line up you've moved a total of five degrees so by lining up one line and then the next closest line to the outer and the next closest line with the inner you can move in one degree increments so that you can get your micro bevel exactly where you want it to be one of the big advantages of the one-way grinding hone is that the material on the back side of the tool that needs to be removed before you can hone your micro bevel can be done on a grinder. It can be done in the same setting with the same tool. Now when you bought the grind and hone you would have also received this support arm for grinding and you should have also received a base to hold it. The base should be set up so that the center line of the pocket is in line with the grinding wheel the front of the jig is flush with the front of the face and the jig is basically parallel with the wheel. None of this is exact, you just have to get it close. You also want to get a height of approximately six and a quarter to six and a half inches from the center line of the wheel to the bottom of the base. Once you've got the base set up, you're ready to work on aligning the arm so that you can grind easily. There's two adjustments that need to be done. You need to adjust the arm for the angle this way and you need to adjust the arm for angle this way. If you look at the end of the jig you'll see that there are four adjusting screws on the outside. The top and the bottom screws will adjust the level and the side screws will adjust the angle. The easiest way to set the level of the wheel is to put a protractor or a level on the top of your grinder and see what your angle is and then set the same on your arm and make sure that those are the same. They should be parallel. The other thing that has to be adjusted is this arm has got to be adjusted angle-wise so that it's parallel with the wheel. Get a tool that is wider than your wheel. Just set it on the wheel. You don't have to worry about any other angles. You just want to set it on the wheel and set a piece of paper on each side of the wheel. You can then adjust the screws so that with a little bit of pressure both pieces of paper are reasonably snug up against the wheel. Once you got that, you're ready to start grinding. In order to ensure that you don't touch the cutting edge, what you should do is turn the grinder on, let it get a little teeny bit of speed going, shut it back off, and then touch the tool to it, and that way you can take off a very small amount of material, and you'll see where you are in the black. So I turn it on, turn it off, touch it lightly, and I can see I'm just touching on the heel there, so I'll be okay to grind. When you're grinding, again, no pressure on the tool, just let the weight of the jig and the tool do the work and slide it back and forth from the bottom. If you try to push it on the top, the jig will bind and it won't move easily. So by pushing it on the bottom, everything will move freely. See, I'm grinding on the heel so my cutting edge is not going to get damaged. Check for heat, it's not getting very warm. Everything's being ground very gently. And I've 
ground away most of the material and this tool should now be ready to go to a honing stone to sharpen just the cutting edge.